People generally forget the mistakes of the past. Citizens who are caught up in Hitler's Nazi Germany hardly notice the gradual development of extremism, mainly due to high emotions and dazzling propaganda. But history often repeats itself. FEMA plastic coffins, detention centres, armoured checkpoints and armoured military vehicles for civil purposes are well documented facts and witnesses who have worked for the United States military claim stores of guillotines located in Fort Lewis military facility. The latest revelation of Obamacare sanctions death by guillotine, code ICD-9E978. However, Obama was only following the mandate of the World Health Organization, one of the specialized agencies under the United Nations. Is the United States government getting ready for a fascist quasi-dictatorship involving forced religion, it would not be the first time that fascism and counterfeit Christianity have merged. Fascism and Catholicism have become synonymous throughout history. Recent developments have seen so-called Protestantism clasping hands with the Vatican. Protestantism once meant protesting against the Roman Catholic Church and her doctrine, labelling the Pope as the Antichrist as the Reformers proclaimed during the Reformation. An ex-Jesuit priest, Dr. Alberto Rivera, explains. In America, the Vatican's agents were at work to wipe out the Protestant movement through ecumenism. The secret sign to be given to the Jesuits worldwide when this was accomplished by the Vatican was when a President of the United States took his oath of office facing an obelisk, four-sided pillar that resembled the Washington Monument and the one in St. Peter's Square in the Vatican. For the first time in history, the swearing-in ceremonies were moved to the west front of the Capitol and President Reagan faced the Washington Monument on January the 20th, 1981. For those who are unfamiliar with the Jesuit order, it was the Catholic answer to counteract the Reformation sparked in 1517. Loyola Ignatius's formula for the formation of the Jesuits was approved by Pope Paul III in 1540. Napoleon Bonaparte had this to say about the Jesuit order. The Jesuits are a military organization, not a religious order. Their chief is the general of an army, not the mere father abbot of a monastery. And the aim of this organization is power. Power in its most despotic exercise. Absolute power, universal power, power to control the world by the volition of a single man. Jesuitism is the most absolute of despotisms, and at the same time the greatest and most enormous of abuses. The general of the Jesuits insists on being master, sovereign, over the sovereign. Wherever the Jesuits are admitted, they will be masters, cost what it may. Their society is by nature dictatorial, and therefore it is the irreconcilable enemy of all constituted authority. Every act, every crime, however atrocious, is a meritorious work, if committed for the interest of the society of the Jesuits or by the order of the general. The Vatican has historically used civil powers in past ages as she does today. Kings, dictators, presidents and prime ministers bow and scrape to the most powerful and richest organisation on the planet, because it is politically expedient to do so. The Roman Catholic Church is secretly tightening her grip on geopolitics and the autonomy of nations who are secretly serving the Pope. Pope John Paul II and President Reagan worked together bringing about the collapse of the Soviet Union, with the first blow being the breaking down of the Berlin Wall. After years of the Vatican being accused of being un-American, the United States and the Holy See announced the establishment of diplomatic relations on January the 10th, 1984, under the Reagan administration. The Senate confirmed William A. Wilson as the first US ambassador to the Holy See. The alliance between the United States and the Vatican benefited both political powers. The Cold War and Marxist atheism made the Vatican and the United States unlikely bed partners. As US presidents are well aware of the authority the Vatican wields, with just over 1.1 billion Catholics spread throughout the world, Jesuit educational facilities also spread and indoctrinate both Catholic and non-Catholic students with Jesuit maxims around the world shaping the minds of future leaders so the Vatican is truly a force to be reckoned with. Some idea of the real estate and other forms of wealth controlled by the Catholic Church may be gathered by the remark of the New York Catholic Conference, namely that his church probably ranks second only to the United States government in total annual purchase. Another statement, made by a nationally syndicated Catholic priest, is perhaps even more telling. 
The Catholic Church, he said, must be the biggest corporation in the United States. We have a branch office in every neighborhood. Our assets and real estate holdings must exceed those of Standard Oil, AT&T, and US Steel combined. And our roster of dues-paying members must be second only to the tax rolls of the United States government. Avro Manhattan. The Central Intelligence Agency was the creation of Roman Catholic Knights of Malta member Alan Dulles. In recent years, CIA NSA directors have been Catholic Jesuit educated men. Historically, the confessional was the biggest intelligence gathering machine of the Vatican. But now electronic surveillance has superseded the confessional as the single most effective tool of modern times. Given the edge on business, politics and religion, a Catholic has first duty to the Pope before loyalty to a king, queen or country. Perhaps this is why many misgivings are expressed about Roman Catholics holding positions that pertain to national security. Furthermore, we declare, we proclaim, we define that it is absolutely necessary for salvation that every human creature be subject to the Roman Pontiff, Pope Boniface. The Roman Catholic Church has always been savvy influencing armies to do her bidding because wars cost money. Let's take a look at the leaders that the Vatican has used in the past to achieve her religio-political ends. King Clovis I, who united the barbarian tribes that eventually became the Franks, and then enforced the rule of the Roman Catholic Church during the decline of Rome after Emperor Constantine moved the capital of the Roman Empire to Constantinople. King Charlemagne enforced Catholicism and was then crowned emperor by Pope Leo III at Christmas in 800 AD. King Charles IX ordered the St. Bartholomew's Day Massacre of the Huguenots, French Calvinist Protestants, beginning on the 23rd of August 1572 in mostly Catholic Paris. King Philip II of Spain ordered the Spanish Armada to invade Protestant England in 1588. Dr. Alberto Rivera, an ex-Jesuit priest, also gives us information on the rise of Adolf Hitler. Another great inquisition was about to begin. Instead of wearing Dominican robes, they were wearing Nazi uniforms. Hitler's brown shirts, called the Nazis, back to the Vatican, used the same tactics of Mussolini beating and bullying opposition into submission, including Roman Catholics, Dr. Alberto Rivera. Hitler's book Mein Kampf was ghostwritten by Jesuit priest Father Steinfeld. When it became known that Pope Pius XI supported Hitler, the Roman Catholic vote swept Hitler into power in 1933. Jesuit Father Himmler, an uncle of Heinrich Himmler, was a favourite of Jesuit Father General Count Halk von Litokowski. The SS organisation had been constituted by Himmler. According to the principles of the Jesuit order, the regulations and spiritual exercises prescribed by Ignatius Loyola were the model Himmler tried to copy exactly. Himmler's title as Supreme Chief of the SS was to be the equivalent of the Jesuit general. And the whole structure was a close imitation of the Catholic Church's hierarchical order. Walter Schellenberg Munich University was founded with papal approval in 1472 and was previously the University of Ingolstadt. Eventually becoming a stronghold of the Jesuit order, the university also became the centre of the Counter-Reformation. Jesuit Petrus Canisos was the rector of the university. Both Adam Weishaupt, the founder of the Illuminati, and Pope Benedict XVI were educated here. Interesting enough is that Pope Benedict XVI was a member of Hitler Youth. Joseph Mengel was an SS Nazi doctor, who also was educated at the Jesuit-controlled Munich University. Mengel identified himself as a Catholic and assigned himself to Nazi Germany's racial purity project which reached its climax at Auschwitz. He was called Uncle Mengel by the children whom he handed lollies to. Sadly, they were experimented on a short time later. The inmates who suffered at the hands of Mengel often died from shock and infection. In 1933, communications between the Nazis and the Vatican were welcomed by the Vatican Secretary of State, Eugenio Cardinal Pacelli, a former papal diplomat to Berlin. During an elaborate ceremony on July the 20th, 1933, a concordant between the Holy See and the German Reich was officially signed and sealed by Vice-Chancellor Franz von Papen and Cardinal Pacelli. Hitler had a dream of a one-world government. Like many other Machiavellian men of past and present times, the Vatican will covertly support anyone 
whom they think will have a credible chance of unifying the world under one political umbrella so that the Vatican can force their apostate religion on others. The Guardian reported, as well as other sources, collaboration between the Nazis and the Vatican, helping war criminals escape the end of World War II. Dictator of Spain, General Franco, who championed the causes of Catholicism fighting communism, using torture and execution to crush enemies or dissenters. While many are distracted by the false front of Zionism, the Roman Catholic Church has infiltrated and commandeered the United States without the public being aware. It is obvious that the US Constitution is eroding under the influence of the Jesuits, the crack troops of the Vatican. Breach of Amendment 6. NDAA Indefinite Detention Act without trial is an extension of the Patriot Act. Crafted by Jesuit Georgetown University educated Professor Yet Din. The assassination of foreign nationals as well as US citizens abroad by predator drones, is also a breach of the Sixth Amendment. Chuck Hagel, Leon Panetta and Donald Rumsfeld have attended Jesuit universities and all have held the position of US Secretary of Defense. The mighty and widely ramified Order of Saint Ignatius was powerful enough to procure by its interest far greater advantages to individuals than could any other corporation, fraternity or even secular power. Jesuit General Jean-Baptiste Janssens Breach of Amendment 4 Spying on US citizens without warrant Former NSA Director General Michael Hayden and incumbent NSA General Keith B. Alexander are both Roman Catholics and tools of the Jesuits. General Michael Hayden was also educated at a Jesuit university. Revelations from Edward Snowden reveal just how widespread this illegal surveillance extends itself. Many nations are holding conferences on how to counteract this problem. Public outrage has been expressed in places like Germany, but it seems that some German government departments, like BND, have implicit involvement with the NSA. Many governments portray disapproval publicly to the media, but secretly aid and abet US spy agencies. Breach of Amendment 2, the right to keep and bear arms. Michael Quigley, educated by the Jesuits, sponsored an amendment to the Patriot Act prohibiting the sales of weapons to people on the FBI terrorist watch list. The trouble is that the FBI now regards some protesters and independent journalists as a threat to national security, therefore deemed terrorists. The First Amendment is on the Roman Catholic Jesuit hit list and is of supreme importance to the Vatican. Amendment 1. Congress shall make no law of the establishment of religion. When the Protestant movement broke away from the Roman Catholic Church, Protestants still honoured the Roman Catholic institution of Sunday. The Protestant reformers never completely severed the umbilical cord from the papacy. In this quote, the Roman Catholic Church makes sport of Protestants for contradicting their beliefs. Protestants accept Sunday rather than Saturday as a day for public worship. After the Catholic Church made the change, but the Protestant mind does not seem to realise that Observing Sunday, they're accepting the authority of the spokesman of the church, the Pope. Our Sunday visitor, February the 5th, 1950. By the annihilation of the First Amendment, the Vatican can sweep many other religions and beliefs into a web of deception and control, making Muslims, Buddhists, Protestants and any other religion bow down in honour to the Vatican, therefore Satan himself. Acknowledging her day of Sunday, or Sun Worship Day, that was not kept by any of the disciples or any of the early churches comprising Gentile or Jew. When the early church became corrupted by departing from the simplicity of the gospel and accepting heathen rites and customs, she lost the spirit and power of God. And in order to control the consciences of the people, she sought the support of the secular power. The result was the papacy, a church that controlled the power of the state and employed it to further her own ends, especially for the punishment of heresy. In order for the United States to form an image of the beast, the religious power must so control the civil government that the authority of the state will also be employed by the church to accomplish her own ends. The United States government has three branches, executive, legislative and judicial. The most powerful branch is judicial because they have the power to interpret the law. Even if a law or amendment is unconstitutional, they still reserve the right to make the final decision. 
Only the majority of the Supreme Court judges are Roman Catholic, with the other two judges being Jewish. Laws can be written in a sort of ambiguous way, crafted by Jesuit-trained lawmakers, so that Supreme Court judges can interpret them any way that suits the papal agenda. There are hidden laying dormant in many of the states of America insidious blueprints for the enforcement of Sunday law and a gross breach of the First Amendment. Blue laws are used, which refers to laws enacted by the Puritan colonies in the 17th century to prevent recreational or commercial activities on Sunday. And during the 19th century in America, some southern and midwestern states passed laws to protect Sunday as a day of worship both on a state and local level penalties for non-religious activities on Sunday, targeted Seventh-day Adventists, Jews and other non-religious people for not attending church, playing cards, baseball and menial chores. In 1889, A.T. Jones, a Seventh-day Adventist, spoke before a United States Congressional Subcommittee, the topic of the discussion being the Breckenridge Bill, which proposed the compulsion of Sunday observance in Washington, D.C. Jones's testimony helped to defeat this bill, and he became known for his abilities in defense of the bill and knowledge regarding freedom of religion. We can see the Jesuits working covertly through the European Sunday Alliance organization to enforce Sunday as a day of rest in the guise of a secular family day. Before 9-11, it was hard to imagine that a government could enforce such laws as warrantless wiretaps on citizens, detention without charge or trial, or assassination of citizens deemed a threat to national security. Is it that hard to imagine a government's now enforcing religious observance by fine, imprisonment and eventually the death penalty? While you're thinking about that question, there are drones circling the skies ready to obliterate anyone the CIA, NSA or Department of Defense give authorization to kill. There are facilities in the United States that qualify as a quasi-neo-fascist system of dealing with civil unrest by potentially enforcement of tyrannical laws. FEMA, the Federal Emergency Management Agency, sounds eerily similar to the Committee of Public Safety, which beheaded many during the French Revolution. Recent DHS advisors and secretaries like John Brennan and Janet Napolitano are Jesuit trained. Jesuit education was described by Jesuit General Pedro Urupe in these terms. Jesuit education would consist in the creation of multiplying agents. Lisa Monaco, former prosecutor, was an advisor to FBI Director Robert Mueller and advised the DHS on counter-terrorism during the false flag operation of the Boston bombing. Little do people know that Barack Obama was groomed by the Jesuits and worked in a Christian grassroots organization called the Gamil Foundation under the direction of Jesuit priest Gregory Galuzzo who became his mentor. And does he keep in, in contact with the organization now? You know, uh, once he became a U.S. Senator, he he's very much in demand. So it's only on occasion we get to interact with him. Well, an, an occasion is fine, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> once in office, Obama appointed many Jesuit trained people to key positions of U.S. government. In fact, no other U.S. president in history has appointed as many Jesuit-educated individuals as Obama. Recently, the President recommended apologist for assassination of Americans, Jay Johnson, as new Secretary of Homeland Security, seen here at Jesuit Fordham University. Jay Johnson was appointed General Counsel of the Department of Defense and is considered one of the legal architects of the U.S. military's current counter-terrorism policies. Jay Johnson is an American civil and trial lawyer so his legal experience allows him to make the U.S. Constitution a very grey area which only lawyers have the talent to do. Chair Johnson has made quotes such as belligerents who also happen to be U.S. citizens do not enjoy immunity where non-citizen belligerents are valid military objectives. So as Chair Johnson takes the position of Secretary of Homeland Security one must ask exactly what does the DHS have planned for the future, considering his relevant experience. An alarming fact is that the French Revolution's Committee of Public Safety Protagonists, Louis-Antoine de Saint-Just and Maximilien Robespierre were Jesuit educated. This period had been labelled the Reign of Terror. 
That being said, let us now turn our attention to the portion of Scripture that tells of beheadings in the last days for not adhering to the man-made Sunday laws. Revelation 24 And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. The testimony of military personnel that guillotines are being stored at US military bases raises concerns and interest. Maybe this information could tie in with Revelation 24 on the subject of beheading. Apparently this way of execution is one of the most painless and can be administered with ruthless efficiency on a mass scale, sending stern warnings to dissenters publicly. The Bible describes the Sunday law as the mark of the beast. By the Vatican's own omission in the following statement, they admit Sunday has nothing to do with the word of God and is their own invention. Sunday is our mark of authority. The church is above the Bible. And this transference of the Sabbath observance is proof of the fact. Catholic record. The first observance of Sunday keeping by Christians that history records is in the 4th century when Constantine issued an edict not requiring its religious observance, but simply abstinence from work, reading, Let all the judges and people of the town rest, and all various trades be suspended on the venerable day of the sun. Bishop Eusebius of Caesarea claims that Constantine and his army were marching toward Rome when Constantine looked up at the sun and saw a cross, with the Greek words, In this sign you will conquer. At the time of the issue of this edict, Constantine was a supposed newly converted Christian, but also a sun worshipper. In a shrewd political move to unite Rome, Constantine amalgamated pagan sun worship and Christianity, transferring the Sabbath, Saturday, to Sun Worship Day, Sunday. The organisation of this system of worship became what we know today as the Roman Catholic Church. Sun worship can easily be seen here in the monstrance, which carries the consecrated host for adoration. The communion wafer, which represents the body of Christ, is a sun disc shaped wafer. So the Catholic priest, by supposed sorcery, turns the wafer into the body of Christ. The created, creating the creator? The Roman Catholic Church has a long history of quackery, following the superstitious even to this day. At every turn, you'll see within the Vatican or Catholic Church's sunbursts. Neither Christ, nor the disciples, or the early churches ever mention Sunday as Holy Day. Yet many claim that because Christ rose on Sunday, that this day must be the new Sabbath. But history refutes this argument for the reason that Christian churches kept the Sabbath up until Constantine's edict in 321 AD. And yet some may claim that the Sabbath is exclusively for the Jews, but the Bible puts this claim to rest. Genesis 2-3 And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it. This is clearly evidence that Adam and Eve kept the Sabbath. Many today are still confused which is the seventh day of the week. The majority of society are unaware that the Sabbath, Saturday, is the seventh day. The Jews came into existence much later in history. Another fact is that the early churches such as in Corinth, Galatia, Thessalonica, Ephesia, Colossae, all kept the biblical Sabbath and were comprised of both Jew and Gentile. The Apostle Paul, in his second letter to the Thessalonians, foretold the great apostasy which would result in the establishment of the papal power. He declared that the day of Christ should not come, except there come a falling away first, and the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. And furthermore, the apostle warns his brethren, that the mystery of iniquity doth already work. 2 Thessalonians 2 verses 3, 4 and 7 Even at that early date he saw creeping into the church errors that would prepare the way for the development of the papacy. The United States of America was a Protestant country as the people who fled Europe were fleeing despotic institutions like the papacy. Historians claim this haughty power killed more than 80 million people for such crimes as owning a Bible or whatever the prelate deemed as heresy. 
The CIA World Factbook states that only 23.9% of Americans are Catholic. But the US government is mostly either Catholic, Catholic controlled or Catholic educated. So the interest of the Vatican will be paramount in the near future when Sunday observance shall be enforced by law and the world shall be enlightened concerning the obligation of the true Sabbath.